Hello there, I'm Black Bright, and I decided to do this um, video because um, so many people are walking around with broken hearts or feeling broken or hurting and they don't even realise the impact that it has on them. So I'm Black Bright, you're welcome to like and subscribe to my channel if it's the first time. And for my other subscribers, welcome and thank you for sticking with me and thank you for your comments and your input. So yes, we have a lot of people walking around with wounds and it makes it so difficult for them to enter into a relationship and they don't even realise why. So are you one of those people who has a hurt, has been hurt and who's trying to get over it and you're not quite sure how to get over it or you think you've got over it but you find that when you get into a relationship you're so intolerant um, you get angry over the smallest little things and you're not quite sure why and you, you know you're trying to be your best self but something keeps on triggering you and you keep going off the rails you lose your temper, you're not such a nice person, then you feel regretful and then you think, oh, you know what, I can't be asked for this relationship stuff. So many people that happens to, they, the, having a relationship these days is such hard work because when you were unconscious, which is like when we were much younger, when you was unconscious, you just went along with it. You just would go out, have fun, make love, meet up, you know, argue it out, and everything was hunky-dory. Now we have all of these kind of diagnosis and um, people coming in and putting in their two pennies worth. And it makes you question your relationships more. It makes you question yourself more. And you're kind of, it just seems like it's such so much more effort to get a relationship to work. It doesn't seem to be organic anymore. It doesn't seem to be where, you know, somebody calls up and you just have a chat and next thing you say, oh, can I go out on a date? Or, you know, and you go out on a date and you have dinner and you, probably, you might go back and you might make love or you might say, I'm going to see you another time. Whatever it is, they just seem to roll smoothly. Now, it seems as though both male and female are overthinking the relationship process. And it's not as smooth. If a man um, speaks to a woman, the woman is wondering, oh, I wonder what he wants. I wonder if he's working. I wonder if he's got any kids. I wonder um, if he's married. I wonder if this. I wonder if that. If a, woman meet, if a man meets a woman that he likes, oh, I wonder if she, what she's after. I wonder if she's going to hurt me. I wonder, you know, why she broke up with her last boyfriend. I wonder how many men she have and this and that. And, it, you know, the, it's no longer an organic process based on two people meeting each other, being attracted to each other, and so forth. People seem to be coming with a kind of a baggage that I have never seen before. And it's not even like it's kids anymore. It's an emotional, psychological um, pain that has just been reinforced after relationship after relationship and it's impacting new relationships until it's reached the point where both male and female are saying, you know what, I don't want to be bothered. I just want to go out, have fun with my mates. It'd be nice to have a partner, but it's just not worth the headache. That is where we've got to now, and it's a shame. And it shouldn't have to be like that. Um, so this video is about how do you heal that pain, the pain that you don't even know that you're suffering, the pain that you thought you got over. So, an unhealed heart is an invitation to a disappointing or deteriorating relationship. And as we know, women are much more open, more emotionally available in relationships. They're more likely to express themselves when they meet somebody that they like. They're more likely to get so excited about it. Whereas the man is kind of cool, um, you know, bit wary, not quite sure, and he's more emotionally reserved. So already when that happens, when somebody wants to come full on and that person is met with, or oh, stand back a bit, we're going a bit too fast here, it's already a rejection. It's already 
causing that female to put her walls up and say, you know what, I need to protect myself. Because um, there's something, I mean, back in the day, there wasn't a time factor. You didn't have to wait weeks and months before you got to know someone. I remember back in the day when I when I um, met my husband at the time, I met him at a dance. He danced to dance and, you know, you just hit it off. And we were in love and we got married and we had a kid and all of that kind of stuff. Okay, it didn't last forever, but it didn't need to. It Well, not that it didn't need to. It, we didn't need to go uh, over that vetting process. I wasn't sitting there thinking, oh, I wonder, you know, if he's legal in the country. I wonder if he's a foreign immigrant. I wonder if he's working. I wonder um, who he lives with. I wonder if he's a mummy's boy. I wonder this, you know. Though all of those thoughts never even entered my head. And with him, it didn't enter his head all the questions that we have today. And so now, you know, it was just a spontaneous liaison, a, a, a spontaneous reaction. And it just went smoothly, for, like from one day to another. Days turn into weeks, weeks turn into months, months turn into years. And that's how it evolved. And a lot of relationships develop like that. Now, too much thought process, too much fear, too much pain from the past. Unresolved issues, pining over your ex. You know, some people, they've broken up with their ex and they're still pining. They still want them back. And you have some exes who keep coming back to people who don't want them. You know, so it's about closure. Is it, it, you know, why did you break up? If you if you think you can reconcile, just get on with it instead of dragging it out. And if it's over, you just make it clear that it's over. You've moved on. It's finished. And be at peace with that. Because if you're not, and you always have that X at the back of your mind, when you're going into a new relationship, you're not going to be able to give that new relationship your full self. You're only going to be able to give that relationship as much as you want to. And you're going to have your, your guard up and, you know, you're not going to be too sure. Male and female. Men who haven't got over their ex, they enter into relationships. And that relationship that they enter into is a gap filler. Because deep down, they really want the ex back. And it's like women, if they, if they, well, women tend to, if they want the expert, they tend not to enter into relationships. They tend to wait for the ex to come back. But some of them don't. So when you enter a relationship unhealed, you lack tolerance. You accept, you accept somebody that you don't really want. You're skeptical, you're cynical, you're mistrustful. You expect others to accept your unhealthy attitude and behavior. You know, you get some people, you know, they're so bitter and angry and resentful. They come into a relationship and they think they can talk to you anyhow. And, you know, they're shouting and cursing and they have the audacity to say, well, this is the way I am. If you don't like it, you have to take the good with the bad. No, you. if you're having a dialogue with your partner, you speak respectfully. You don't start cussing them out just because you're hurting from a previous relationship. That's not his fault or her fault. Similar with men. You know, you get them all aggressive. You say one thing wrong or you do something that reminds them of what their ex did. Oh, my God. So, um, yeah, it's unfair to expect a partner to accept your unhealthy flaws. We all have flaws, but they need to be healthy flaws, or you need to be able to deal with them in a healthy way. You don't have to be cussing out someone's mama and, you know, goodness knows what else, and you don't need to do that. So you need to take responsibility for your growth. And not offer ultimatums, uh, you know, if you don't accept me as I am, you can you can take a hike. Because they should take a hike. Because no one needs to put up with that. 
And there's this um, misnomer that being yourself is being your obnoxious self. When you're, if you're obnoxious, it's because you're in pain. Your authentic self, healed and whole, should be nice, should be caring, should be loving. So when you present your authentic self to another person, he should see that person that he wants to be with. Not this ogre that when um, something triggers from a past relationship, they go berserk and have the audacity to tell you to put up with it and make you feel bad when you don't. So we don't want anybody who's making excuses for bad um, behaviour. Um, when you feel attacked... They will, when people feel attacked, they will defend themselves, even if they are wrong. And even if the point you're making is correct, your approach will affect the way people receive it. So you'd have some people who, you know, the way your tone, your reaction, you'll be amazed how your tone, your reaction and what you say can trigger people off. Have you ever been somewhere where somebody has kind of said, oh, so what are you going to do about it? That would tick you off automatically. Now, you can either say, you know, I'm not really going to entertain this conversation. Or you can be one of those people who say, yeah, I'm going to do something about it. So what, so what are you saying? That reminds me of Joey Essex. Um, so be mindful how you communicate. Um Like I said, we're all, we're all born to be loving. It's only the trials of life and our experiences and everything we've been through that has made us who we are, that has shaped us into this um, person that's trying to protect themselves, that's afraid to be hurt, that's afraid to be vulnerable. The thing is with relationships, they're the, most, they're, they're the thing that makes an individual most vulnerable. No other situation will make a person vulnerable more than an intimate relationship because you're, you're allowing yourself, you're putting yourself on the line to be hurt, to be betrayed, to be abused by the wrong person. So people get a bit, they put their guard up a little bit and some people put their guard up a lot. So... Um, if you haven't been healed and you're still hurting or you're or you think that you still want a relationship but you're not ready yet what you're doing is is that you're opening up the door to narcissists narcissist is you know an unhealed or a vulnerable person is the narcissist playground they love it they love the fact that there's a woman out there who's desperate who's lonely whose clock is ticking So if you're feeling lonely, if you think that time is running out, if you're unhealed, if you have low self-worth, if you're broken, damaged, or you don't want to start over, you just want to stay with the same destructive relationship, you're a prime target for a narcissist. So that is why it's so important to heal. And I'm going to tell you how you can heal in a moment. So learn to heal. Well, learning to heal will help you improve the quality of your choices. Um, you'll be a better you'll be a better communicator and you'll you'll be able to create a better relationship with yourself and others so how long does it take to heal well how long is a piece of string how long does it take to grieve you see a heartache is just like grieving the death of someone you do not know how long it's going to take all you know is that you've got to put um, systems in place to help you heal, whether it's going to a counsellor, whether it's um, self-reflecting, whether it's going through everything you could have told that person and reconciling with what you didn't. It's just about coming to peace with yourself and accepting it. 
Now, until you reach that point, you are going to carry pain around with you and it is going to come out in the most bizarre ways at the most obscure times. So, um, Stefan Speaks, um, I was watching one of his videos and he was saying in order to heal from pain, you need to write down everyone who's hurt you. And what you would do is, anybody who comes to mind, whether it's a, a, whether it's years ago, a couple of days ago, whether it's a big thing that they did or a small thing that they did, as long as they come to your mind, you write it down. You write down who their name of the person who hurt you, and next to their name, you write down how they hurt you. And then, um, then you're meant to um, write a letter to them and tell them exactly how you feel uncensored, regardless of who it is. Could be your mum, could be your sister, could be your husband, could be anyone, could be your employer, could be anyone. But the important thing is, is to write down or type however you're feeling in an uncensored way. If you want to call them and what's it, what's it not, you do that. But you don't send the letter. You just write it. So it's one way of getting rid of it. It's a kind of a detox. He calls it an emotional detox. So you're getting rid of all that garbage that's been settling in your stomach and in your spirit and in your head and in your mind. You're getting rid of it. It's all coming out. And then, after you've done that, you then read that letter as though you're reading it to the person who's hurt you. If you've got more than one person, you just do it one at a time. You don't have to do it all on the same day. You can do it. You can spread it out to your convenience and how you feel comfortable. So that you then read it out as though you're um, reading it to the person who hurt you. And after you've done that, then you censor it and you make it not so abrasive, not so attacking, not so hurtful. You take all of those hurtful words out, but you don't change the message. You don't change the fact that they've hurt you or how they hurt you. You've just taken out all the, um, all the profanities and all that kind of stuff. Because what that does, it kind of helps you to take a more positive look on the situation. And then after you've done that, um, hmm, I think I'm going to have to, I'll try to remember it, but yeah. What I wanted to say is we have something in counselling called Just Talk Therapy, and it's a bit like that. So I don't know if Stefan was inspired by that, because with Just Talk Therapy, um, you normally do it with somebody who's passed over, and you put a chair facing each other, and you can put a teddy in the chair or you can leave the chair empty, and you just imagine that the person who's hurt you is in that chair, or the person you didn't get to resolve issues with is in that chair, and you speak to them uncensored. And it's supposed to help you heal from grief or whatever. So this is a similar thing, only that what, Steph what Stephanie is suggesting is that you write a letter. And apparently you could get emotional and, you know, you might even break down, but you just take it at your own pace. And then what you do is... You put yourself in their shoes and then you, well, this is my suggestion. This isn't Stephen. This isn't Stephen's suggestion. You put yourself in their shoes and then you do a letter responding to your letter, explaining what might have been going on for that person at that time, why they behaved in the way that they did. I thought that was quite good, actually. But yes, so you could do that. And then um, I also wanted, I also had a thought that you should try doing it on yourself. You know that we are so, we're the harshest critics of ourselves. 
we judge each ourselves so badly. We find it difficult to forgive ourselves. We're, you know, we are, we are our own worst enemies. So what I was thinking is, if we write a letter to ourselves saying, oh, you're so bloody stupid, I hate you for, um, I hate you for um, allowing that to happen, you know, I can't, you know, I'm really upset that you allowed that to happen. And you could really have a go at you. Have a go at you for everything you think you did to disappoint yourself. Just think about all of those things you thought and you'd be surprised how many there are. I mean, the other day, I mean, I haven't done it yet, but I'm planning to do it. But I just by thinking about it, I was on the bus and I was thinking, oh, there's that. And, that. and I didn't even realise I'd been chastising myself for so many things. So get it out, get it out, get it out. Then what you should do, or not what you should, but what I'm suggesting you do, is then you do like what you did to um, the, the other people that hurt you. You then take out all of those um, attacking words, patronising words, the words that are not very nice, and you make the letter more kinder. And then you read out that letter, and then you put yourself into your shoes and you respond to yourself about why you did the things you did at the time. Now, to me, that will give you a holistic healing as opposed to just going for people outside who've caught you pain and forgetting yourself who's caused, who's caused you pain. So I think that would give you a nice 360 degree um, healing. And I, I, I've got a funny feeling that might be quite beneficial. It might be, it might take a long time. It might be a bit overwhelming. It might be a bit hard to swallow. But like I said, you go at your own pace. You don't push anything. If you start feeling uncomfortable and emotional, you can stop. Don't force it. Wait till you're ready. Go back again and see what you can do. See how you, how far you can get in this healing process. Because until you heal, you're going to, you're not going to have a happy relationship. And with men, you know, they think that they're not hurting because they're putting on this bravado. They're having a good old laugh and they're drinking and they're out with the lads. They don't, they think they're not hurting. But they are. They go home and they drink to high heaven. They smoke to high heaven. They take drugs. They gamble. They cut. They don't like spending time by themselves. They go all over the place, having it off with all and sundry. And so they're hurting. And then when they do meet somebody they like, they're they're afraid. That means they're still hurting. They haven't gotten over the pain of the last relationship. They're skeptical about the new person. I'm not saying that we should just jump in without giving anybody any thought, but it all depends what you're reserving, what you're holding back on. There are some kind of things it's not necessary to hold back on. Unless the experience of your last woman is that she took your information and spread it over Facebook, or she did something with your information, and then you're going to think, oh, bloody hell, you know, I've got to be careful what I share. Well, that's totally different because then the person can understand why you're withholding what seems like general information. Okay, so what else? And don't skip any of the stages. I know it's a long process, but please do each stage. Even if you do one person at a time and you speak um, and you recite that letter to that person and then you edit that letter and then you do... Um, your own little bit, even if you do it one person at a time, it's still going to help. And you will notice your behaviour. It's amazing. When you start healing, you don't get so irritable, you don't get so angry. Of course, old habits die hard, but you will notice the difference. So unhealed, you may feel as though you've met the right person. But can you spend time with them? And that's another thing, you know, 
when you're unhealed, you're more likely to attract people who are not right for you. And you can end up spending time with people. You can end up being in a relationship. And when push comes to shove, you don't even like the person. You don't want to spend too much time with them. I was in a pub. Um, I don't know how long ago, but I was in a pub. And um, I saw this couple. And the man, was, the man was sitting there and the woman was sitting there and they were drinking their beer. They both had beer and their faces was as long as you come. And I thought to myself, I'd hate to be in a relationship like that, where the laughter stops, where the fun stops, where the touching stops, the affection stops. I would hate it. You know, where is the love? What happened to that couple? And then as time wore on, I think after a couple of hours, by the time I'd finished my meal, you know, they'd obviously had a few drinks and they were a bit more lighthearted and they started laughing and joking and swearing and cursing and what have you. But I thought, what a shame when you have to have a drink and get more or less paralytic before you can have um, a laugh with your wife or talk to your wife or your spouse or your husband or whatever. What a shame. But that's how it is with some. And, you know, when we had COVID, that is what happened. A lot of people, they ended up with finding out that the person that they'd married or were living with was not the person that they could spend the rest of their lives with. They couldn't stand them. They tolerated them before because there was distractions. Distractions of work. They go out to work. They go to the pub. They go... They go shopping or whatever it is they do, yachting, whatever. But whatever they used to do, it was all stopped because of COVID lockdown. And all of a sudden, they had to face their partners. And it was their worst nightmare. I remember being at work. And I remember this woman saying to me, oh, my God, I can't bear being with my husband 24-7. He's going to drive me mad. I've got to get out. And she wasn't joking. You know, a lot of people are in relationships. And the only reason they can stay in those relationships is because that person isn't around all the time. I just thought of something because because I'm so busy. I prefer my fella not to be around, to be honest. If he's going out with his mates and going out raving, that's fine by me. But, you know, them, but... It, that wouldn't be because, hopefully, I can't stand to have him around. That would only be because while he's doing his thing, I'm doing mine. But you do have people, though, that given an opportunity to spend time together, they find it so difficult. If there's no TV, no phone, no laptop to distract you, no games, they can't do it. Just the two of them looking at each other in a room. I think that's sad, especially if that's the person you've married. And you have to ask yourself, what changed? What happened? Where did it go wrong? So, um, and yes, you'll find a lot of people, you know, because they, um, they're not happy and they don't know how to say they're not happy. And they hold it down and become resentful and then they become passive aggressive. So you hear these little snidey remarks every now and then. They're quite hurtful, but, you know, they kind of chip them in as though, you know, I'm going to get that one in. And it's them feeling hurt. They're not happy. So can you handle your partner's worst moments? I put here, don't settle down until you see oh, your partner angry. Because, you know, sometimes when you're uh, meeting people and you you haven't healed, you can attract the wrong person. And when you attract the wrong person, you don't know what they like. And then, you know, until you've seen them angry, you don't know if you can handle how they behave. So... I don't know how you can get them angry because nobody wants to deliberately make somebody angry. So I'm not even quite sure how 
you could do that task to be honest but anyway um hopefully so it won't be you that triggers their anger it might be somebody else or a different situation and at least you can see how they handle it some people confuse um chemistry with connection so if you do meet somebody and you think you're kicking it off you know just make sure it's not infatuation Chemistry um, is based on, I think Stefan said it's based on um, external factors. You know, you, you're out there doing something and you're physically doing something together and you you kind of looking in each other's eyes and you're feeling kind of horny and all that kind of stuff. That's chemistry. But a connection is where you don't even have to do anything and you feel connected could just be having a talk and you feel connected that doesn't happen very often but it can happen so um yeah when you're thinking about not resolving your hurt remember hurt people hurt people because they have up their guards they have up their guard they're self-protecting they're selfish they all they're thinking about is i don't want anyone to hurt me again i can't stand it so if you're going to pop your guard and that is your fear, you're not ready to enter into a relationship. So you may not be hitting or cheating, but holding back means that you're undermining the relationship. You're not giving yourself. Relationships need the whole person. You need to be true to yourself and true to the other person. And the two of you need to be doing the same thing. The two of you need to be honest and open and transparent and know that each other loves that person regardless, regardless of the way they look, regardless of um, their idiosyncrasies. And providing the two people are respectful, that's what you can really hope for, respectful and loving and caring. You know, personally, someone who's loving and caring is more important to me than anything else. You know, because when you think of somebody who is self-sufficient, you know, that, that aspect of it, you can't really give. You can't really give yourself those hugs and those, um, that warmth and that emotional nurturing. You can talk to yourself, of course, and do all that kind of self-talk, but it's not the same. So I think that people underestimate the human touch and I think it's really important. And so when you watch couples, or if I watch couples and they're distant and cold, I think that's really sad. It might be their thing, but I think it's, I think it's sad. I really do. Um, so you could be hurting yourself by denying the opportunity to love. So just make sure that when you take something into your life, you are ready. If you're not ready, be open and honest and say to that person, I'm not ready to have a relationship. You're a lovely person. I would love to have had a relationship with you, but I'm just not emotionally there. And let that person go about their business. They might be a bit peed off or upset, but hey, it's better than stringing them along. So... Um, Protecting themselves, selfish mindset, I'm not going to let go so you can hurt me. Don't take it personally. Yeah, some people who have who have hurt you, don't take it personally. Everybody's going through their own traumas and dramas and experiences. And it comes out, they end up projecting and you end up getting the brunt, especially if you're the closest person to them. But you don't take it personally. Try just to um, soldier on and look for the best and be the best. I mean, as long as you do what you need to do as an individual, you be the best that you can be. Be the best partner you can be. If they can't catch up with you, then you might have to say, well, I've done my best. It's time to move on. But, you know, that's all I can say. Be the best you can be. And hopefully it will be reciprocated. And that's all for now. Bye bye.